Hi, my name is Hadassah Delholm, and today I'm here with Liza. The and today we're going to be talking about Stress Awareness Month. Thank you for being here with me today, Liza. Thank you for having me. So, what is stress? So, stress is, you know, there's, there's several definitions out there, but I like to say stress is the physical and emotional reaction that people experience as they encounter um, changes in their life. Um, it's also important to recognize that stress is a normal feeling, right? I think when we hear the word stress, we get extremely overwhelmed um, as that as if stress is a bad thing. There's different types of stress, right? So you have your routine stress, which could be a student having pressure of school, an employee having work pressure, your family, just uh, other daily responsibilities. When there's the stress that could be brought on by, um, let's say, some maybe negative changes, right? Especially when we're talking about, like, we're doing this during COVID, losing a job, financial stressors, divorce, illness, loss of a loved one. That is, you know, another form of stress brought on by a sudden negative change. And then you have your traumatic stress. Uh, uh, the traumatic stress experience during an event like a major accident or a natural disaster where people may be in danger of being seriously hurt. What is the difference between acute and chronic stress? So acute and chronic stress are obviously both different uh, both types of stress it just the timeline is a little bit different so um according to the psychology american psychological association they're going to chronic stress refers to an extended type of stress that impacts people every day of the year and can last for years and even a decade right so this is a, a more severe um and then you have your acute, acute stress, which is a type of stress that occurs only for a set period of time or only because certain factors are happening in the environment. So you would look at this um, acute might be initially uh, COVID stressors as a result of COVID. It's acute stress. Chronic, something that would be more similar to something that would be a chronic stress is uh, maybe a health, you know, something that's wrong with your health and maybe something like cancer and dealing with stress as a result of cancer that's continued to impact you every day, every day of the year. Um, and like they said, it last, could last for years. Okay. So how can you find help if you experience stress? Okay. So the one thing I would say is first um, recognizing it, right, is being mindful that, okay, this stress, um, again, we talked about healthy versus unhealthy stress. So um, recognizing that this is something that is causing significant impairment um, and I want to reach out and get help. So number one, mindfulness is recognizing that. And then also there's a lot of different platforms to seek out services. So I would say one of the bigger ones is psychology today. You can type in your location um, and then find a therapist locally to you, whether you're looking for someone via telehealth or in person. There's also online platforms like Better Health. Um, there's different, like myself, someone in the community that is really involved in the community just to educate um, the community providers or the resource on resources and what's available like someone like retreat behavioral health and our synergy programs um, so reaching out making sure that you're reaching out to people to seek out um, guidance what are some resources that people can use yeah, so there's a lot of great resources out there right now um, on apps. If you're familiar with the Calm app, and a lot of these are just mindfulness and meditation apps. Um, some of them are free or at a very small cost. So the Calm app, Headspace, which is something that is um, somewhat newer and has been really effective in working with clients um, in private practice. Um, the local 211, reaching out to 211, um, depending on the severity of your symptoms, you know, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, if, you're, if you're in Florida, we have the Henderson Mobile Crisis Unit. So these are some resources for you to access um, if you are in need of just some meditation guides or even helping find, help find a therapist. 
What are some signs and symptoms of stress? Um, stress can cause um, a lot of things ranging from physical, mental, social, emotional, and behavioral concerns. Um, some mental health symptoms and signs to look for, trouble sleeping, decrease in concentration, uh, maybe poor judgment, some constant worrying, um, just inability, inability to just laugh and, and have fun, um, feeling sick, um, some social ones, you know, feeling lonely, isolating, not trusting, um, what else, personality changes, not engaging in enough time, you time, no self-care, then we have the emotional, like angry, fear, um, depressed, and uh, some behavioral ones, yelling, swearing, might be using alcohol, um, anything, you know, drugs, alcohol, self-medicating, so those are some of the signs and symptoms that you can look for and again that's not that that's not necessarily all of them those are just some examples of what you may experience not engaging in your your adls the showering um the brushing your teeth just overall taking care of yourself how does stress affect the body specifically yeah so stress can affect stress has a really really interesting way of, of taking over <laughs> your life and affecting your body and it can it affect it in very in many ways physically mentally um, emotionally so some of the physical ways it could affect you um, well it could disturb the immune system it could disturb the digestive cardiovascular um, your sleep and reproductive systems I know some of you might be thinking how is that possible but again stress um, really could play a factor in um, affecting your body you might some might experience some digestive symptoms while others might have headaches sleepiness sadness anger some irritability um, and then over time continued stress on the body may it could cause and contribute serious health problems such as heart disease um, even you'll see some have high blood pressure diabetes um, depression anxiety so I know some of these might seem extreme and this doesn't mean that because you're experiencing stress you're automatically gonna have heart disease and high blood pressure again these are just these are some uh, as continued stress um, increases it could contribute to this it doesn't it's not a one-size-fits-all just some things to look out for what are some tools that can help with stress getting exercise regularly. Um, you know, when we talk about stress, it's an increase in cortisol levels, which increases stress. So um, exercise can help that lower the cortisol level. So you wanna, even if it's 30 minutes a day of walking to help and uh, improve your mood and health. Relaxation activities, I know I spoke about the Calm app, um, but exploring relaxation programs, which could incorporate muscle um, relaxation, meditation, breathing exercise, um, diaphragmatic breathing is learning to breathe through the diaphragm. Um, we have setting goals and priorities. So deciding what must be, what needs to get done now and what can wait, that can alleviate some stress is having some more of time management, um, saying no to certain tasks that you know you're not able to take on that might in increase um, some levels of stress and then I would say stay connected it's really important to know that you're you're not alone and everybody experienced some form of stress so reaching out to help uh, whether it's to friends healthcare professionals your colleagues to receive some emotional support um, in order to reduce stress how can you manage stress how to manage stress again it's recognizing that this is this is stress um, and that it's becoming a little bit more difficult to manage than what you're typically used to recognizing what's beyond your control right so we have our little circle of recognizing what I have control over and what I don't what is beyond my control and how do I free myself from taking on things that I, I'm unable to manage at the time um, so I would say one of the biggest things is recognizing what's beyond your control um, and engaging in self-care I have spoke about that but engaging and self-care taking some time for you there's three things that once you um, I look at is once you have these three things intact 
then we can start to see some improvements and that is your sleep your eating habits and your physical activity you know what are you getting your eight to ten hours of sleep are you engaging in at least 30 minutes of some form of physical activity and it could just be walking and then um, what food are you consuming? And I mean, by no means a nutritionist, but we also need to recognize um, that if I am in, you know, indulging in a lot of high sugary, high energy foods, um, high energy drinks, that that might exacerbate some of this increased stress um, and anxiety. Um, so we want to look at those three things as well. Thank you again for being here with me today, Liza. Thank you for having me. If you or anyone else you may know may be in need of mental health care, contact Synergy Health Programs at 855-802-6600, that's a 24-7 line, or you can visit us at SynergyHealthPrograms.com. Thank you.